Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this evening, evening's Thursday, May 30th special Capitola City Council meeting. May I have a roll call, please? Councilmember Clark? Here. Councilmember Morgan? Here. Councilmember Peterson? Here. And Vice Mayor Brooks? Here. Um, I am covering for our mayor this evening, so nice to see everyone in the audience today again. Um, yes, okay, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, this moves us to item two, additions and deletions to the agenda. Do we have any? Staff has no changes to the agenda this evening. Great. Um, for item three, additional materials. Staff received four emails um, related to off-agenda communications. We also received an updated staff report and attachment for item 6A, the POA, MOU, and salary study, or salary update. And then for item 7A, we received five communications. All materials have been made available in the agenda packet and were provided to council in advance of the meeting. Great. Thank you. Uh, this moves us to item four, oral communications by members of the public. Um, this allows time for members of the public to address the city council on any consent items on tonight's agenda or any topic that is not on the agenda. Anyone? Okay, there are none from the members of the public, so any staff comments? I don't think we have any comments this evening. Council comments. I have one announcement uh, coming up, 17th Annual Capitola Classic Car Show. It will be held on June 8th, uh, featuring over 280 hot rods and classics. It will be in the village, 9 to 5. So it's June 8th, Saturday, 9 to 5 in the village. Hope to see everybody out there. Anyone else? Yeah, I just want to um, address some of the <clears throat> comments that we've been receiving about the leash laws on the beach. I see we've received a number of emails and there is a petition circulating that has 413 signatures at this time to allow dogs on leash on Capitola Beach. So I'd like to see um, the city bring this back to council for um, just more information and deliberation. Uh, I'd also like to discuss just Capitola's dog um, laws in general, not just on Capitola Beach. All right. Um, and then I just wanted, uh, well, maybe this is for staff to comment more on. At our last couple of meetings, we were referring to a grand reopening of our wharf in August, and it looks like although the wharf itself will be ready, the grand reopening celebration um, will not be happening on August 14th. That's correct. We have had to, unfortunately, just due to delivery challenges and some of the enhancement projects, we've had to push the grand opening celebration. And we're aiming for same day of the week. I think it'll be a Wednesday in later September. We'll be announcing that, I think, as soon as potentially tomorrow. Great. Thank you. Okay. Seeing no other comments from council or staff, we'll move on to consent items. Uh, this is only one item this evening. Council? Anyone like to make it? I'll move to approve the consent items. Okay, we have a first. I'll second it. And a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. So we'll move on now to general government. Uh, item A, our proposed fiscal year 24-25 budget. Welcome, Jim. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Good evening, Council. Um, so this is our second budget hearing, so I'll provide a um, kind of brief summary go over a couple of amendments that we've made since the first hearing, and then we have a couple of um, follow-up items to discuss towards the end. <clears throat> so um, during the first budget hearing, we had an estimated in fund, general fund ending balance of 848,000. That's now been reduced by about 78,000 with the approval of the um, POA MOU. So the new estimated available general fund balance is 770,000 100,000 set aside for the employee down payment assistance program. And then we always kind of 
try to maintain a target fund balance of 500. So we have about 170, but we have ongoing labor negotiations that are more, more than likely going to impact that. Um, as far as city council goals, we have 2.3 million towards city council goals that we um, determined through the goal setting session, which includes an additional 239,000 of general fund dollars from this year's budget. And then um, just as a reminder, we're utilizing Measure F to balance out in future years, but um, when Measure F sunsets in December of 2027, current projections show our budget is in surplus. Thank you. Um, so this was the projections that we showed you at the first budget hearing. The top of that, that top red box with the revenue projections is unchanged um, from the first hearing. We did do, I mentioned some amendments to um, revenues and expenditures that I'll cover in a couple slides. So our net impact to the fund balance um, of 249 is about $21,000 higher than what you saw during the first budget hearing. And then again, this, this is kind of showing the same thing. Um, the revenues from this have increased by 45,000, and I'll touch on that in the next slide. Uh, expenditures by about 24,000, um, which gets us to the 249. Again, that's going to be those the 848 number and 748, really 770 and 670 now with the POA MOU. So as far as the amendments, um, I had a math error on personnel costs, so that's been corrected. And that um, reduced personnel cost by just under twenty-one thousand. We've programmed in the fifteen thousand dollars from LAFCO, as well as the additional fifteen thousand for the LAFCO study on both revenues and expenditures. Um, on the community, community development department, we've increased building permit revenue by thirty thousand, as well as plan check expenses by thirty thousand due to a couple of large projects that are going to happen during this or get started during this fiscal year. Um, net impact of all of those, again, general um, fund balance is about $21,000 higher than the first hearing. As far as follow-up items, I'll touch on both of these real quick, and then we can come, come back for a better discussion. But, um, the, the pump track, as we all know, is in poor condition. Um, the idea of paving it would reduce maintenance and allow for more all-weather use. The estimated cost of pave, right? About eighty thousand dollars. We have thirty thousand in um, donations with a commitment for an additional twenty uh, for total funding of fifty thousand. And efforts are underway to raise um, funds for the remaining costs. Next slide. On the um, eviction defense collaborative, council asked us to um, staff to investigate the potential for a five to ten thousand dollar contribution. Um, we have looked into most of this information. We've gathered mostly Katie in the last forty eight hours. Um, Based on proposed uses, um, it doesn't appear that spe any of our housing special revenue funds are eligible for this. Um, just as uh, in this current budget, we have $25,000 programmed for the Community Action Board for emergency housing assistance programs and short-term rental assistance. Um, but CAB does indicate that they think there's a need for the legal assistance for low-income residents facing foreclosure. <clears throat> um, there has been a request for funding program uh, for funding this program submitted to all, I believe all jurisdictions within the county. Um, however, this is outside of our normal three-year grant cycle for community grants, as well as the regional core program grant cycle. And then just uh, as far as what the funding or who the funding would go to would include uh, community bridges, senior legal services, tenant sanctuary, and conflict resolution centers. We presented the McGregor Park to the um, Finance Advisory Committee last week, and they um, recommended that we allocate thir the full 30000 but continue to seek uh, additional fundraising for a $15,000 match. So we would be at fifteen, but wanted to show a commitment to getting the project done. Um, as far as the eviction defense, their recommendation was to designate the 5000 but they didn't have any of the information that went over on the previous slide about uses and, and how that program would work. So there, there it was to designate it following that further follow-up. Um, as far as next steps, uh, we had a June 4th special fact meeting scheduled for June 4th. We've canceled that one. We have one on the books for June 6th for a special city council meeting, regular city council meeting the following week, and then another special, special city council meeting if we need it for the 20th with the um, 
tentative plan to adopt a budget on June 27th. Uh, recommendations are to receive the presentation and identify any follow-up questions that you'd like the staff to bring back and provide direction regarding McGregor um, pump track as well as the addiction defense collaborative and then um, either continue budget deliberations to June 6th or council the remaining budget hearings and direct staff to come back on June 27th with the budget for adoption and that is my presentation and staff is available for questions on this side. Questions? Is it the fax recommendation to allocate the $5,000 for the defense fund? The thought there right. was to designate it following and allowing staff to <coughs> investigate and follow up, but have it at least earmarked so that if it seemed like something council wanted to do, we at least had the money available to do that. Okay, but we're not... But not fully make the recommendation until we had some follow-up information. In addition to what was just provided yes yeah okay thank you yeah they they didn't have the information that we provided just now so I think that this is kind of the follow-up on what staff learned and in looking into the program does that okay. make sense yeah so who's leading this program so my understanding is community bridges is sort of the lead organization for this and then the other ones tenant sanctuary Conflict Resolution Center and Senior Legal Aid uh, Assistance, excuse me, would operate kind of underneath them, but Community Bridges is planning to be kind of the lead organization. They made a $750,000 regional ask to, with the bulk of the funding they've asked uh, to come from the county. And is that going to fund this program for a year or how long? I'm not entirely clear. Um, it's also outside of the core program funding cycle. So I don't know how the Board of Supervisors, I know at a staff level, I've heard them talking about, they already contract with Tenant Sanctuary for some of these services, potentially expanding that contract. But at the end of the day, I don't know what the Board of Supervisors will ultimately do with the request. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it seems like a good initiative or general concept and um, not a huge amount of money, but I would like more information. I feel like I still don't know many details about the program or how it's going to be implemented or how many people are going to be affected, what the real need is. Yeah, if I may. Um, so as a member of FAC, that's exactly what I what I said. And that's kind of why we did the lower amount yeah. um, because by the time we have our open um, call for grants, then they can return back to us and say, here's what this program looks like. This is what we did with the monies. And they could essentially apply for one of our grants um, uh, for one of our applications or submit an application. Um, but it's very new and I, it was important at least when the mayor brought it in that it just showed community, like everyone had buy-in, you know, into the program. Mm -hmm. And like I presented to council last time with the 27 million, excuse me, $27 billion deficit in the um, governor's budget, we know that a lot of these discretionary programs are gonna get cut first. So I think that they knew that this was valuable. Um, it was there was programs like that somewhat in existence so they're just trying to make it robust and, um, and asking for us to show buy in essentially can i clarify we're just asking to sort of earmark those funds because we're not necessarily sure how the timing is going to work out for this or i think it's up to the council you could hold and wait for future action or you could direct us to fund it at five thousand k today either one and i believe that fact it was Let's give them the 5,000. Mm -hmm. We all show that the city of Capitola, um, it, it, you know, is showing that we're here to participate in the regional effort, um, but we wouldn't do any more at, that, at this point because to your point, there's not a lot of sustenance there. We don't really know, but we do know that the programs are good. Yeah. 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 But so that 5,000 can be used right, for this. right away. Yes. Essentially, okay, and that would be up to us to say yes, and I think that's what you have tonight to say yes. Put the five thousand dollars towards this um, this proposal. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. For the eviction I, defense I'm on board. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Um, any other questions before we go out for comments? Quick question about the pump track. Mm -hmm. Previously, we talked about 
some companies given this in kind work. Uh, is that part of the donation that we'd be looking for? I'll take a first stab at it, but we have a pump track expert here in the room, so I'll, I'll do, give you the quick answer and we'll see if we need to go deeper. The $80,000 estimate, I think, did include some donations of materials. Um, I don't know whether or not, you know, those donation offers were made in different economic climates. So, you know, at the end of the day, if we have the funding, particularly if we put $30,000 out there as a match to other private fundraising, I think in conversations with Mr. Monty, who has been the primary funder to date, he has indicated he's going to be able to find other folks to help fund it. And then if we need additional funding, I think looking to other partners to bring the project across the finish line, um, it would be a pretty attractive project. So that's kind of the lay of the land. I think the 80000 is sort of the lowest cost. And, you know, depending on the donations of materials and things like that that we're able to get, it, it could bump up a bit higher. Great. Any other questions? Um, I just have a question for staff. If we can, um, we have a lot of grants out there right now um, pending, which if we get them would do great things to our budget. Um, if we can get an update just on um, where we are with some of those grants, I know, Jim, I've asked you about like the timeline for CDBG and what that looks like. We were also made aware that our congressman put in an ask for the park um, and what the timeline, I know that has to do with the budget being approved and I would just be nice to know when are they going to see the budget in June and when we can hear from them and I don't know what else you guys have. Oh, there was park grants additionally. Um, there's a few things that would just be nice to get some updates on. Would you like that at a future meeting? No, no, or, okay. update. Yeah. yeah, just so I can speak to them better. Sure. Um, okay, any other questions before we go to our audience? Okay. This is your chance to everybody, especially in the front row. Any questions? No. Okay, I'll bring this back to council for further deliberation and action. And tonight's action is to receive it. There are, if we can get it maybe back up, because I know there's some language around if we approve this, we'll need to cancel some meeting dates. Thank you. I'm looking for a motion. Um, I'll make a motion to um, direct staff for the funding for McGregor Park pump track and the ev eviction defense collaborative, um, along with the budget that we worked on last week. Um, so then I guess that would enable us to cancel the next two special meetings. Second. We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? This item passes. Thank you, Jim, for an incredible job. Thank you to our staff for working so hard and continue to provide such great programs for the community and making our Capitola city, city of Capitola so special. So thank you to all of you. Um, here's to a new year. Uh, that, huh, like, I haven't been in the seat for a while. Actually, I actually have to close the meeting. So that brings us to item eight, adjournment. Our next meeting will be on June 13th at 6 p.m. This meeting's adjourned. <laughs>